So Ezekiel has a house that he lives inside of. There's a prosperity anointing on Ezekiel as a prophet of God. And that prosperity anointing has caused him to have his own place of living arrangement. And he has a territorial power from God on him to rule over a place. Look what it says right here in Ezekiel chapter 8. Look what it says. It says, and it came to pass as I sat in my house, verse 1. And the elders of Judah sat before me. Look what he's saying right here. Look what it's saying right here. He's saying, as I sat in my house. Ezekiel is dealing with the fact that he's sitting in his house. So Ezekiel is an owner over a house. Now, saints, I want you to always remember this. That when you are honoring God, meaning you are sowing money into him, sowing provision into him, he comes into a covenant concerning your living arrangements where you're currently staying, where you lay your head, where you go to sleep at. He comes into covenant with you about the place where you abide daily to upgrade you to promote you, to enhance you. Do you know that the Lord watches how you take care of the place that you live in? The Lord watches how you deal with it, what you do while you're there. The Lord studies to see what's going on with you while you're inside of the place where you live. How are you handling either that little space, that medium space, that large place, he's still looking at how you deal with it because you're never at the finale place where you're going to live. You're never at that finale place. Did you know that? There's always another place that God has for you to live. The same way with vehicles. You have a vehicle, there's always another vehicle that you don't know about that God wants to give you. Saints, it's not about greed. It's not about greed. God, when he wants to bless you, it doesn't make you greed. When God wants to bless you, it's about the Lord showing forth his love towards you and to show you how much he cares about you. And also, more so, it's him rewarding you for diligently seeking him. When Hebrews said that he's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him, God is in an investigation of who is going over and beyond in focusing on me, serving me, sowing into me, obeying me. And he rewards those. It has nothing to do with how much you have. It has nothing to do with how much you possess. He gives you more. So the Bible said that you're going to be a ruler over much. It means that the Lord is not even looking at you have more than what you need. He's looking at, I must reward you according to your seeking of me. So a lot of times when, when you are making that dedication towards the Lord on purpose, the Lord will let you see that a lot of people are not doing that. But that dedication is for you. That dedication gets God's attention and it is rewarded and he gives you plenty. Saints, if you sow, you'll get the harvest. If you sow, you'll get other people's harvest. When you sow, you don't just get your own harvest. You get other people's harvest because they are not sowing. God not only gives you what belongs to you, he gives you what belongs to someone else. He takes other people's wealth and transfers it to you. That's what Proverbs 13 was talking about. Proverbs 13 talking about the wealth of the wicked. It's talking about people that refuse to obey God. I'm going to give you their wealth. So the harvest is not even just about your own inheritance. God will give you someone else's inheritance. So there is an expansion and enlargement 
all when you're dealing with sowing that takes you further and further and further in your possessions, in your provisions. Saints, do you know that God will give you a thousand different garments and that still take you shopping? Because your, your sowing has authorized you for more clothes. Are you seeing this? God is not measuring out how much clothes you have off of how much clothes you have. He's measuring how much clothes I want to give you because of how you make me feel. If you're taking notes, write this down. Honor is an anointing that teaches me how to make God feel good around me. Whoa. If you're taking notes, write it down. Honor is an anointing that teaches me how to make God feel good around me. So when you operate in honor, God starts to teach you what is likability in his presence, what he likes. And then says, did you know that when the honor anointing is on you, God will ask you questions in hopes that you will be quickened to the signal that he's attempting to give you. Let me give you an example. The Lord will come to you and say, why don't you like apples? And then you go into a whole conversation. Well, I don't like apples because it gets stuck in my teeth. And I don't like apples because uh, last time I had an apple, it was rotten. And I don't like apples because, you know, I heard somebody say that apples are not all that way good for you. It was a lie what they said. And I don't like apples. And you miss the whole thing. God asks you why you don't like apples because God wants you to like apples. You just went on a whole spree on why you don't like apples. I don't like apples because they fall underneath certain trees. I don't like apples because my great-grandpa, he ate an apple. He swallowed it. He died on the mattress. They tried to revive him seven times. So they was calling all type of names. Somebody called Buddha. Somebody called Candyman three times in the mirror. It still ain't sure. Even Candyman didn't show up. Candyman didn't show up after they called him three times in the mirror. I, and, and, we, and he had the apple in his throat when they did the diagnosis. They said he died because the apple was stuck in his throat. And, and from that moment, I, I just didn't like apples because I felt like it took him out. And I didn't like apples. I felt bitter about it. And you missed it. God asks you why you don't like apples because God is saying, I would like for you to like apples. So saints, oftentimes when people are being offered the honor anointing, they reject it. They say, no, I ain't taking it. But the honor anointing has all that you was created to enjoy inside of it. If you take a note, write this down. Honor is unselfishness being trained to me by the Spirit of God. Honor is unselfishness being trained unto me by the Spirit of God. Whenever honor is in the schedule to, to be handed to you in another plane, God will simply ask you a question because he doesn't force you to do anything. But he's letting you know through the question what he wants. So God will tell you, why, 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 why don't you, why don't you do sit-ups? Well, I don't do sit-ups because um, they, somebody told me that sit-ups not gonna work. And, and, and I don't do sit-ups because when you do sit-ups, they say that it can affect your liver. You missed the whole point. God asking you why you don't do sit-ups because doing sit-ups would honor Him. He would see you doing something that he wants to see you doing. Honor is where God teaches me how to perform for him. If you take a note, write that down. Hallelujah. Honor means that God starts to teach me how to perform for him. So it's performance power. It's performance producing power. Does God want a performer? Yes. How do you think secular singers sell out stadiums? Because of performance. That's the only reason. People want to see them perform. Performance is a power from God. 
The enemy been using it wrongly now. The enemy been using it wrongly. But I'm telling you right now, performance is a power from God. That's why Satan uses the law of performance to steal money. That's what Satan's kingdom does. Steal money. But God trains you, anoints you to perform for him through honor. So honor is not about you at all. It just requires you. God doesn't want to pleasure himself. He wants somebody to give him the pleasure. So in honor, God trains you. This is what I like. I can pin up my own shirt by myself, but I want you to pin it up for me. I could pin on my own necklace, but I want you to pin it on for me. I could braid my own hair, but braid my hair for me. I could buy, I could create my own meal, but I want you to buy a meal for me. I can get money myself, but I want you to give me money. Honor is when God trains you how to perform for him. Give me something that I could give myself, but I'm going to give you the chance to give it to me. I can make myself happy, but I'm going to give you a chance to make me happy. I can take care of myself, but I'm going to give you a chance to take care of me. So the Bible says that there were certain women. Why were these women certain? Because they had decided to receive the curriculum, the teaching, the, sec uh, uh, the session where God will show them how to perform for him. That's why they were certain women. They took the literature of God on what he could have did for himself, but they took it on themselves to do it for him. They were his helpers. And they decided to feed him and make sure he was able to travel and make sure that he was able to get his ministerial missions done. They was giving him money. They was taking care of him. Now, you notice the Bible doesn't have anything about certain men. It doesn't have anything about certain men. It only has certain women. Because women are often the, the, the support that keeps the ministry and the gospel of Jesus afloat. It's women that often take on the mind of Christ to protect Christ from crisis. So Christ don't go through a, a financial crisis because of women. That's why when you are a woman of God, you have to be ready for the attack against your mind. And the attack against your mind shouldn't last long because Satan should be able to see, I don't own this woman. This woman is not mine. Let me get out of here because she embarrassing me. I'm trying to give her sadness. She got joy. I'm trying to give her lust. She got patience. I'm trying to give her anxiety. She got self-control. I'm trying to give her bitterness. She forgiving. I'm trying to give her darkness. She in light. I'm trying to give her distraction. She focused. I'm trying to give her weakness. She's strong. I'm trying to give her um, deception. She got discernment. So you should not be in a long mental attack of warfare in the mind because Satan should be able to recognize and identify that you know how to stand your ground. That's why women must be very ready and careful not to let the enemy take over their brain because this is a well and a river that God places in your brain that causes you to experience the honor anointing that helps Jesus. Certain woman, certain woman. When you are sowing, God will give you more than what you want and what you dreamed about in certain aspects of your enjoyment. So if you say, I mean, I just wanted five shirts like this, God will give you 10. And then when he give you 10, he got five more, he give you 15. And when he give you 15, he'll give you 20 more. And he'll have you running over until you got you, you got a, you got a piss in his storage, you got a piss in somewhere else because you're running over. If you say, man, Lord, if you just grow my hair down to my ears, he'll grow your, your hair all the way to your shoulder. You say, Lord, just grow my hair down to my shoulder. Hair grow your hair all the way to your back. The lady that does my hair, she told me, I ain't never in the history 
of doing hair have seen anybody whose hair has grown this long. She says, what are you doing? What products do you put in the hair? I said, I don't put no products in my hair. And since the other person that was inside her place, they said, uh, they said, um, you don't know her. She get real jealous. Um, she get real jealous. And then she started saying, you know, my hair not growing. And I've been trying to grow hair. I put all type of products in my hair. It's not growing at all. And <laughs> it was the time where I was doing a teaching on jealousy. So I, I told her, I said, your hair gonna grow. But I said, you, you also gotta start uh, celebrating the fact that people have long hair. I said, how about you start with me? Start, start being thankful that my hair is growing long. Be thankful and watch how your hair grow. But see, there's something going on in her that's dishonorable that's stopping this. Whenever dishonor is in you, whatever you want to grow will be stunted. Dishonor is a growth stopper. If you take a note, write that down. Dishonor is a growth stopper. Dishonor is a growth stopper. Dishonor is a growth stopper. So whenever dishonor is in somebody, uh, even though you want things to expand, it won't expand. Now you know why God calls you into sowing seed. Because he's telling you, if you want to expand, I have to be able to teach you honor because honor is the only thing that has expansion in it. Honor is the only thing that has growth in it and abundance in it. So when he said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly, Jesus knows that that life is hidden in honor. So he teaches you, give and it shall be given unto you. You won't be honored because you honor it. You got to be the first one to pick the honor down. Don't wait to be honored. The honor is going to come after you have arrived at the decision. So saints, when I was coming up, I wasn't worried about making people my partners. I wasn't worried about making people honor me financially. I just knew I'm going to complete every honor assignment each week, each month, each year. I'm going to do it. And inside of the honor is honorable people. You got to recognize this. Sowers are hidden in my sowing. Sowers are wrapped up in my sowing. So if I get the sowing right, Everybody that is in the righteousness of God to sow into me will be there. I don't have to make myself stress over what's going to be my future. No, I am creating my future now. I know what my future looks like by the honor that I'm releasing. If I'm sowing, I know that riches and wealth and abundance is not just going to be in my house. It's going to be on the street that I walk. It's going to be on the path that I travel. It's going to be in my journey. It's going to be in my workplace. It's going to be in my traveling. Even when I travel, money and wealth and riches is going to be. And when I'm in the plane, wealth and riches is going to be in the plane with me. It's going to be everywhere because I'm the one initiating it. This is what people of God got to go past the naturality of life. Because even sowing will cause there to be an end of an error. What does that mean? A lot of you all have been following me for years, and you know what this means. Even Sharika, she was sewing. And her, 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 her genealogy was judged. And people started to die. A lot of you all have experienced this in the last two years, one year. Because when you're sewing, you are receiving the proper order of how your life is supposed to be. It'll end errors and genealogy because the new family of God is coming forth. 
When your seed sowing, things that need to be dealt with will be dealt with by God. He won't let anything just pass by. It will be targeted, it will be touched, and it will be judged. Say, that's why when you're sowing seed, you must always remember, I have to get my mind right because I'm going to start seeing some stuff that if I wasn't sowing, I actually would go crazy. If I wasn't sowing, my mind would start playing tricks on me. But because I'm sowing, I know that the will of God is being done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you sow and then you get divorced. Huh? When you sow and then your child dies. You sow and then you lose your job. No, 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 no. I don't need to worry about that because my sowing has given me the path that leads to life. So everything that's happening, I can praise God because he's leading me to more. I may not see the land flowing with milk and honey, but that's my finale. I may not see houses and lands, but that's my finale. I may not see my cup running over right now, but that's my finale. So I'm going to let what the seed has set in motion be set in motion. That's why sowing needs to happen in your life so that the enemy won't have place to use the gates of hell against you and prevail against you. That's why sowing must go on so that the things that God wants to accomplish in you and around you and with you and for you can be done. When you sow, you open up the channel where God's will and his desires and his intent, his intent can happen without any satanic interference, interruption, no infection of the enemy will be included in this. That's why the Bible said, the blessing of the Lord make it you rich and adds no sorrow. The sorrow will be coming from Satan. Satan doesn't have no authority to intertwine Satan's self in what God is doing because you're sowing. Sowing places you in an invisible location with God. Satan don't know where you're at. That's why Satan attempt to get all type of fleshly activity to come out of you so Satan can locate you. Satan don't know where you're at. Did you know that you can know that somebody exists but not know where they're at? Do you know where, uh, um, uh, do you know where Michael Jordan is right now? No. You can say that he's in a state, he's here. You don't know where he's at right now. He could be in Africa. He could be in New Zealand. He could be in Israel. Shoot. You don't know where he's at exactly unless he comes on live or he shows a picture and he says, I'm here today. You don't know where he's at. You know he exists. You don't know where he's at. Well, that's the same way it is with principalities and powers. When you're sowing, they know you exist, but they don't know where you're at. When you operate in the flesh, they operate in locating you. So the locator of, de the locator of demons is not your existence. Because you can exist and they still not be able to locate you. Their locator is your flesh, your vain imaginations, your wrong thoughts, your wrong words, your wrong ways, your wrong company. That's how they locate you. So saints, when you live in a soul in a life, you're hid with Christ and God. If you take a look, write that down. When you're sowing, you're hid with Christ and God. You're hid with Christ in God. Your location is in God. Satan can't find in God. Satan was removed from ever locating in God. Satan doesn't know what in Christ is. That's, that's another thing that's so uh, massive about this. Satan cannot locate in Christ. When you're sowing, you're in Christ, not only according to his declaration, according to his mercy, but according to your function. You're in Christ. This is now your behavior. You're in Christ. This is now your thought life is in Christ. That's why Satan don't want nobody to sow. Satan will do anything to get you not to sow, even if he make you lazy, make you lose your job, make you, make you, make you not want to get a job rather, not lose the job because losing a job can't stop you. Not wanting to even have a job, not having no ambition to make money. That's how Satan know to get you. Satan don't want you to build an altar and start sowing because there is a covenant that you release with God to upgrade your life, to exalt you, to lift you up to higher and bigger and better. 
That's what sowing does. You don't have to beg God to make your life easier and better. Sowing is the easy yoke of Jesus manifesting in your life, making things a, 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 a piece of cake. Sowing makes my life a piece of cake. You're taking notes, write that down. It's sweet and easy and soft. I ain't got no hard life. You know, we often hear about the hard life, but say this, saints, sowing releases the soft life. My life becomes soft, sweet, and full of serenity. I have peace all around me. The seed allows God to declutter my mind of deception. When I sow, I am receiving the power of God into the circuit floor of my mind so that I can get delivered from lies and falsehood and corruption. When I sow, I'm coming into the same apostolic office with my apostle so that my mind could be delivered from strong man demons. If you're taking notes, write this down. Sowing is freedom from unclean spirits. Unclean spirits, if you're taking notes, write this down, releases strongholds in my life that birth depths of dishonor. Unclean spirits are enemies of my true worship. Unclean spirits is the introduction of divination. If you're taking notes, write that down. Sowing deals with divination in my life. Sowing delivers me from falsely praising God. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the Lord good with my mouth, but I'm not going to obey him good with my decisions. I'm talking about him good with my talk, but I'm not going to obey him good with my conduct. Seed sowing sets me free from divination where I have a mouth that's mocking God because I don't have my members obeying God. Sowing sets me free from magic springing up in my brain over time where Satan can convince me out of God's plan. Sowing it gives me apostolic authority over the serpent to demolish the serpent's head. I have power to tarnish the serpent's thought life with my honor towards God. So the serpent cannot plan correctly and devise plots against me properly because I'm seed sowing. 